there's no ambulance on scene here. Across the UK, elite helicopter teams are saving lives every day. Ooh. Bringing the hospital to the roadside in a race against time. If you can just get the door away so I can have a look. That's bad. Really, really bad. These are their stories. Ten to eight minutes, man. Can you just stay still and we're going to get you out? That's it. Big release. Come and give me a kiss if you want. She's been an absolute star and very, very brave. It's all right, sweetheart. Durham Tees Valley Airport. Operational headquarters of the Great North Air Ambulance. I've got a full-time job in A&E in the hospital, but I tend to cover the weekends on the air ambulance. I can't remember last Sunday I've had a lion. The team covers some 9,000 square miles, from Tyneside to Cumbria, Teesside to the Scottish borders. I get a buzz from flying. It's one of the real advantages of the job. It's definitely not a standard nine to five. It's very much suck it and see each day and see what happens. <laughs> Hello, Air Ambulance. Um, so you've got RTC, is it two vehicles? Okay, spot on, we're on route. Okay, we've got the bag. Is the blood in the boot? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay, what is it? TC to contract. Right. Brigade are on route. Some jobs sound like they are more serious than others. It does get your adrenaline pumping if you're told that there's two people trapped in the car and you think they're both seriously injured. Oh, traffic building up. That's stationary traffic on the that 66 is. there. Yeah. The A66, it's a notoriously bad road, been to many fatalities and some horrific injuries on that road. The cop field, Jay. Yeah, can they? Yeah. I, I just want to make sure you can get out of it. No. I'll go round back into wind and we'll just make a sensible decision, my love. I think the police officer's just going to close the road, actually, Jay. Right, I'm going to go in the middle. Okay, okay yeah, fine by me. Clear all the way down on right, the left. Right, you're good out at nine o'clock. Nine o'clock, check. But when you arrive on scene, you're thinking about a lot. There's no ambulance on scene here. You don't know what you're running into. Oh, yeah. We're taking in a lot of information. We're looking at how many vehicles have been involved. We're sweeping the area with our, with our eyes. Ooh. Maybe your eyes manage to just see that there's something not quite right. Right, if you can just get the door away so I can have a look. Hello, sir. What's your name? The elderly couple's car has taken a huge impact. For Jane and Dion, getting them out is the first priority. That's really bad, Jane. That's bad. Uh, no, we're very trapped if you look at the bottom end. Yeah, I think his feet will come out. No, they won't. They won't. They won't. I've just been in there, they won't. It's this bit of dash that's come down. I still think that will slither out. I can't move it. Yeah, no, don't you worry. Don't you worry. my love, we know that, darling. All right, we're just looking at what the best option is. Right. Take it off. Yeah, take that door off for the minute. We need a B plan in place. She's got access straight out that side, so yeah. I'm not worried about that. We need this he, yeah, we need that spread because yeah. at the minute we can't get him out. So we'll work on that first and then we'll work on the top end of the car. Okay? Hello, my dear. Just keep looking straight ahead for me. What's your name? What's your name, my dear? Margaret. Margaret, are you normally fitting well? Yeah. You... This is our so... Don't worry about that. Have you got any pain anywhere else apart from your wrist? Uh, yeah. No, the wrist is not hurt. Just your wrist, nowhere else? My wrist is okay at the arm. Okay. 
She yeah, is well fun. modelled up. Yeah, I know. The bank that I've called five eight. Yeah. Yeah, but they were heading back and then they were needing fuel. Increasingly concerned, and with room for only one patient in the helicopter, the team decide to mobilize their second aircraft. Hey, let's go ahead. What's the current situation of 5-8? Our 5-8 is still on station. Based near Penrith, the other team can be with them in just 10 minutes. They'll be refueled now, are they, Mark? Uh, if so, could you task that, please? Yeah, that's a Roger. I'll do that now. Hello, thanks, Mark. I'm here, this. Oh, OK, mate, I've got a job. Don't shut down. I've got a job for you. Billy, little scratch in your arm here, hold still. Oh, no, it's no. not. OK, more. You all right there, Bill, my love? We'll soon have you sorted and your wife, all right? I think that tip fit might have gone, but them feet are definitely free. There's oh, got two left. OK, my sweet. Despite the reassurances, the medics must constantly monitor both their elderly patients. Guys, are you okay if we get her to just hold there and there? It's just a, a bad feeling, gut feeling. I think we'll put a line in before we move her, just for two seconds. Jane, can you just chuck us the cannula kit, please? Just gut feeling, I think, when we lift this lady out. Um, I'm the same deal. I'm going to the same That's fine, don't worry about it. You're just going to put a needle in, yeah? Yeah, he's all right, he's fine, he's in good hands. Ready, race, move! I'm on the deck over here. That'll do, yeah. There we go. I'm going to miss him. All right, mate, don't worry about it. We need to get a sample on him, don't we? Yeah. Right, he's getting Margaret out now, he's still awake. Are you happy with her? She doesn't look great. Fingers, lad. Fingers. Fingers. Margaret, how are you doing? I feel sick. You feel sick? Yeah. Oh, she's broken her wrist. Right, deep breath in and out. <laughs> Margaret, is that sore there? Yeah. On your tummy. Oh. Is that sore? Wiggle your feet for me. Good girl. Our main concern was that she may well be bleeding internally. I was happy for Billy to be transferred with the air crew from 5-8, leaving Margaret to be looked after by myself and Jane. Who's Tate? Am I sending him with them now? I would. We need some numbers on her. That's why I'm not going to morphine. Her belly's rigid. I mean, I think we should just go, because her radio's getting yeah, she worse and worse, yeah. With Margaret's pulse weakening, Dion's fears are confirmed. Her condition is deteriorating rapidly. On the A66 near Scotch Corner, the crew of Helimed 63 have requested backup from their second air ambulance, Helimed 58. Looking at the wreckage, I think Billy and Margaret are quite lucky to have come out of that car alive. Sorry, my dear. I know it's not very comfy. We've done what we can to stabilize them. Our next priority is to get them into hospital as soon as possible. He's all packaged and ready just to load, to be honest. All right, let's go with him then. And it, the wife's complaining of a very sore abdos. We're just dealing with her because she's and just you come both out. James Cole? Yeah, both yeah, of us go there. Yeah. Yeah. Because right. they're husband and wife, so it makes sense. Yeah. Any pain in your belly, Bill? Oh. No, okay. Yeah, you're right to be good hard. We'll do the crew. We're calling you on. Ten minutes into James. Ten minutes, James Cook. I'll let him know. Thank you. Hello, indeed, Sierra Max. Can I pre-alert you, please? It's an eight-year-old male. Eight-year-old male. He's one of two that we're currently dealing with. Oh, Hello, Margaret. Right, just gonna really there, Margaret. I'll spit oh, over a cup of tea. Are we in there? Hey, have you got an ETA, Jane? 
Yeah, Hi, right, it's just the air ambulance again for the like, second patient. No, this is the second patient, 73 year old female. From the same incident. With both aircraft now in the air for the short flight to James Cook Hospital in Middlesbrough, it's Helimed 58 with Billy that touches down first. Helimed 63 isn't far behind. Concerned that Margaret is losing blood internally, it's a tense journey for the team. After their traumatic ordeal, the couple arrive in recess within just a few minutes of each other. OK, right. Old couple, front passenger, driver. The damage to their car is phenomenal. She's got a very, very tender, rigid abdomen, um, and she's tender around her pelvis as well. Doesn't seem to have any long bone injuries apart from her right wrist. Is this one going to require a whole body scan as well, right? I'll bring up CT and I'll let them know that we'll need priority. two body scans. She'll be priority, She's yeah. Worse. Billy and Margaret have had a significant crash. It's a big impact. I hope they'll be OK. But only time will tell. For Billy and Margaret, the next few hours will be critical as they face scans, blood transfusions and life-saving surgery. Once we've handed over, uh, it's a, a mad rush again just to get everything restocked, everything repacked in the aircraft, so we're back online. No, I'll carry it. No, 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 a bit of banter always gets you ready for the next job. Our pilot's injured. So you need a plaster, you don't need an air ambulance. It's like a chunk out, it's just bleeding all the time. Oh. Stupid thing. Give it a kiss. <laughs> Thank it's all pardon. better now. Thank you, pardon. <laughs> I was an idiot, that's what I was thinking. Here we go. There are certain jobs that do affect you. Doing this job's totally changed the way I drive. Things that used to wind me up, just think, oh, I'll crack on, because I've seen too much at the other end of the scale. If we're not untouchable. We're all capable of getting injured and hurt, so, yeah, I think you do look at things a little bit differently. Exactly one now. We have an ETA of three minutes. Three minutes over. 170 miles southeast, Norwich Airport is one of East Anglian Air Ambulance's two bases. Well, I joined the East Anglian Air Ambulance team in 2008, so I've been part of the team for seven years. A bit different from my day job as uh, medical director of an acute hospital. Ooh, it's allowed it. Marvellous. That concludes the check. You are good carrying that bag. He is good. I used to be seven foot. Pam is a brilliant doctor. She's so committed to what she does in her daily work. She loves the air ambulance so much. It is an integral part of her life. I love it all. I've got everything. I've got the T-shirts, the tea towels, the teapot. <laughs> Rod's run a marathon, haven't you, Rod, mm. for the charities? So. Last year? Yeah. That's why he's so thin. <laughs> Tuesdays are normally historically quite quiet. It is the last day of school. Teenagers tend to go a bit mad, so we might get um, some stuff arising from that. We, we, we never know in this job. Unfortunately, our busyness is somebody else's misery. Hello there, Norwich. Is that first time to say it? The crew request is to a primary school not far from the base. We call the car. We're driving. Oh. Hello, Carter. Just revised Anglia One Mobile. Over. Obviously, flying's great, but this particular job really was just a couple of minutes down the road, so it's quicker, safer, easier to go in the car. You have arrived at your destination. Make a U-turn if possible. 
We love going by car, don't we, Rod? I think we're in Sudan. then. Thank you. Oh, it's the last day of school, isn't it? I told you, the last day of school, it's always a disaster. Where's the patient? Is that... I think it's one of the girls shutting up. Oh, bless. Children are really easily frightened, so it's very important to get down to their level and to have that calm approach. Hello! What's your name? Hello, Olivia, I'm Pam. Oh, my goodness, that looks horrible. Is it very sore? What happened to you? Um, I was going down the back to the castle, and then this girl jumped on my arm. OK, sweetheart. That looks ever so painful. I think we're probably going to need to give it a little tug. Not a tug. Not a tug. Well, somebody's going to have to put it on. Don't, please don't cry. Did you hurt yourself anywhere else? No. Broke OK. Um, literally just a few weeks ago. OK, the same, uh, the same arm. Yeah. Oh, yes, I can see you've had pins in, haven't you? And I think you had it pinned, didn't you? OK, listen, before. please don't cry. We're She's not doing so. Oh, that's... Listen, um, listen, yeah. listen, sweetie, listen to me. I know, because you probably had it done last time. How about a bit of mad? Uh, mad would be good. The mad is a syringe with a little attachment on it that allows you to give medication into a child's nose without the need for injecting them through a needle. Olivia, I'm going to hold your nose like that. We're going to pop that up the other nostril. I need you to sniff it, Look OK? That, One, two, three, sniff, go. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Keep sniffing, keep sniffing, That's keep it. sniffing. Good girl. Pam still needs to give Olivia a stronger painkiller intravenously so she can straighten the arm. No, I know. I don't like needles either. You just keep breathing that gas and air. Under the influence of both morphine and gas and air, Olivia is much calmer. I'll tell you what, I'll do, I'll do you a deal. You close your eyes and I'll close mine. How about that? Nice deep breaths for well me. Well done, you're doing Hey, that's all over and done with now. That's the worst over and done with, all right? I promise you, that is the worst over and done. All right. She's a bit of a star, isn't she? Steve, I'm going to start trickling in the cat if you want to get organised. So I'm going to give 20 rod, OK? You want the gas gun. There you go. We'll see how we go with that. Well done. Nice foot. Well done. Well done. That's brilliant. Well done. OK, just right. Take those nice deep breaths from me, OK? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last day of term, isn't it? Last day. Oh, it's the last day in this school. Oh, well done. OK, well just keep going, Roger. Off to high OK, yeah. man with Benny Cass. Oh, high school, now. That's it. You're doing fantastic. That's it. Well, well done. Let's get a little bit of money. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you very, very much for your help. You've done fantastically. Well done. I can't praise the staff of the school highly enough. They were really calm, really helpful. You look straight now. Yeah, pretty much it hasn't got that big bend in it like it did have. Yes, last day of school. Why did you do on your last day of school? One, two, three. How's it feeling? Is it comfortable? Or is it still a bit sore? <laughs> this is Olivia. Um, she's a frequent flyer, I think it would be safe to say. So she broke her arm a few months ago. She was jumped on whilst on a bouncy castle today. The only injury was to her right arm. She had a beautiful swan neck deformity of her right um, okay. forearm when we arrived. We gave her some intranasal dye, morphine. morphine. She's had a bit of ketamine, ketamine to pull it straight. Yeah, ketamine, but she's been an absolute star and very, very brave. I think children are amazingly resilient. Sometimes it's only when mum or dad turn up that actually the tears start to flow. It's OK to cry now Dad's here, isn't it? Yeah, I know, I get it. R.E.F. Witten near Cambridge is home to Magpass, a charity that's been saving lives for four decades. We're quite remotely located in the middle of an R.E.F. base, so it's all fenced off and protected. There are 
thousands of rabbits and uh, you know on a nice morning um, it's, it can be quite beautiful. MAGPAS have been using a helicopter to mobilize their doctor paramedic teams across six counties for the last 20 years. We haven't got our usual aircraft, it's off for its annual service, so we're using uh, this one. Still, they'll go just about as fast as each other. <laughs> but fitting all the kit into the replacement aircraft is proving a bit of a challenge. See, I can't really get that trawl bag off without moving the stretcher. That's all we can do, isn't it? Because that will not fly, and I, I think uh, that's not an option. Flying is pretty cool. It is something that you're not supposed to be able to do as a human being, and it, you know, it's pretty awesome to be able to overcome the laws of gravity. Main pass helimedics. We're on our way. The team have been scrambled to an incident 60 miles north in rural Lincolnshire. It's going to be a stinking day. Tell me exactly what's happened. Yeah, a man's fallen out from the top of my shed onto uh, concrete and, and shingle, and he's hardly breathing. And but I think he knocked himself out. He can't move. Yeah, how old is he? <laughs> 78. So he's got Parkinson's as well. Okay, ETA. Uh, about 14 minutes. Okay. Take it. There he goes, Matt. It's right on the centre fold of that. Lovely. Right on the, the crosshairs in the middle. Okay. I have two young boys. My boys think I'm a paramedic. They don't really understand um, the difference, and that's good because at Magpass we're not different. <laughs> I just I'm the one that carries the drugs. They do point to every helicopter in the sky and ask me if that's you know, is that your helicopter, Daddy? They often ask me, you know, how my day's gone and was it a good one, was it a bad one? And sometimes it's a bad one and they're quite supportive. Okay. Yep. Check your doors and harnesses, please. They know that sometimes they need a hug. All secure front left. Remain secure in the back. Echo Alpha Helmet 66 on the ground. Off comms and into the D. They've fallen off that shed. That's pretty big. Hello. Hello. Fred. Um, Fred lost his balance. He's fallen from that height to where he is now. Okay. He's sure. He's got Parkinson's. He's yeah. got severe pain from the middle of his back all the way down. Right. Pain on the left shoulder. Fred's fall onto a concrete slab has left him in agony and with possible spinal rib and shoulder injuries. I just want to make sure they get some pain relief sort sure. of initially because it's painful about 9 out of 10. The fact that he suffers from Parkinson's makes it harder to assess damage from the fall. Has he normally got this curvature of the spine? It is a little bit. Yeah. With Parkinson's. Yeah. Fred, do you remember what happened, mate? Yeah? Where's your pain now? Yeah, it's all right. In your, in your back here somewhere? Yeah, all right, we'll hold you nice and still. I'm not going to poke on that too hard. Does it hurt when you breathe? All right, some nice deep breathing. Well done. We're just going to get a line in you, Fred, and then we can give you some strong painkillers. All right there, chap. Sharp scratch, Fred. Oh, help make your shoulder and your rib cage a bit better. Oh, no, sorry, mate. Two to start with. Let me know if you start to feel a bit woozy. We can give you plenty more of that one. Well, start off gently with it. Do you know what, actually, Nick? His respirator's 40, so that's sustained. A normal respiratory rate is between 12 and 20 breaths per minute. At 40, Fred's is worryingly high. When somebody's breathing very fast, faster than they should, it can be a sign that there's a major trauma. Now, that, that respiratory rate could all be... Pain. Pain and splinting because he's got multiple rib fractures. So I think we should probably go to the local and get some imaging done. I think you're probably right. But he but is trauma positive. On the respiratory, the respiratory rate. rate. He does trigger on it. Righty, how's that morphine working there, Fred? Is that helping a bit? No. No? We'll give you some more then, shall we? It's not clear how much Fred's age and underlying condition are contributing to his distress. We have a list of criteria that help us decide whether a case is major trauma or not. It wasn't 
really clear in this case, and so we phoned a duty advice doctor who's available 24-7 to help us with queries like this. We are with a chap in his 80s who's fallen 15 feet or so. Fred, oh. you seem very, very anxious. Oh. Is that normal for you or is it just all the pain? Oh. It's the pain. His respiratory rate is 45 and I think it is a function of his possible several rib fractures. Should we give you something stronger for the pain? Oh. Do we trigger him on the major trauma triage tool because of his respiratory rate? Where's he gone? Or do we say, let's get him to the nearest? I'm going to drop a ketamine, he's in agony. OK. Thank you, Simon. I think... Air to Addis. OK. That's what he says. The advice was that if he triggers the major trauma criteria in any way, um, then to bring him to the major trauma centre if that is safely possible within a certain time frame. The local hospital is closer, but the decision is to fly an extra 15 minutes to the nearest major trauma centre at Addenbrooke's in Cambridge. But immobilising him is going to be a challenge. Have you got a KED? Brilliant. Keep your head nice and yep. still for us, Fred. It's Just nice and immobilised by this now, so actually we can do a one-person roll. There we go, there. Oh. Well done. Well done, Fred. Okay, we're, in. we're in. Ready, steady, lift. I am worried about Fred with his rib fractures. If he's got spinal injuries, well, he may well not return to a level of functioning uh, that he's currently at, um, and at worst, he, he could die in hospital. Um, we're just going to go down to the aircraft and load him in. Do you want right, to give him a kiss? All right. All right, then. See you later. It seems inhuman to pluck him away from the clutches of his family without them having the opportunity to say, see you later. Well done, Fred. Nearly there, champ. Can you rest your head back, sir? Oh. There you go, it's a bit of a pillow there. Yeah, apologies for the delayed update from scene. We've had some uh, questions about where we're going. We're now loaded into the aircraft. We will be taking this chap to Addenbrooke's. 18 minutes to Addenbrooke's pad from here. Six, six, lifted from scene on route to Addenbrooke's. How long have we got left to run, Dickie? About three minutes. Three, three minutes. Take off by Helimed 66 on the ground at Adam Brooks. How are you doing, Fred? The pain's back. <laughs> Fred? We'll it's very to... hard for us to understand what you're saying at the moment, yeah. so just bear with us. We've been in the hospital in a couple of minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready, steady, slide. Okay. You're doing ever so well. Yeah. Uh, and let's hit him back up again, please. Hello. He's got a ked on from mobilisation. He's got kyphosis, so lying him flat isn't great. Yeah. Going to get rid of this waistcoat for you, OK? Because the nurses don't like it. It's not your colour. It's all right, sweetheart. It's okay. Ready, ready, slide. Okay, this, this is Fred. He has Parkinson's. He fell out of a shed loft, landing on his right hand side. He's complaining of right shoulder pain and right paraspinal thoracic pain. My main concerns are, are multiple rib fractures, possible uh, posterior flail segment on the right there. The hospital trauma team will now run tests to find out if Fred's Parkinson's is masking serious injury. I'm already worried about Fred. He could well have had several body systems injured in a significant way, given that he was elderly and frail and had Parkinson's. At his age, unfortunately, a simple rib fracture or two is much more likely to cause him a significant uh, problem than someone in their 20s or 30s. In the northeast of England, Teesside is the nerve centre of the Great North Air Ambulance and home to Helimed 6 3. 
the control desk is kept busy handling thousands of emergency calls every year. Hello, Air Ambulance. Yep, six trays available. OK, thanks, bye. For Deputy Director of Operations and hands-on paramedic Jane Peacock, it's not just answering the phones that keeps her on her toes. It's like having a bunch of kids at work with me some days. I've got my eye on you two. Yeah, they take a bit of control, they're a bit out of hands. But they all are lovely. Is this the beach? On a beach, we can't uh, shut down in case the engines didn't start again. The request from Coast Guards and land ambulance paramedics involves landing on a beach which presents certain complications. If we're going to have to stay rotors running, huh? it's kind of to have a plan before we get out. Let's work on the premise that if he's packaged, we'll just throw him in and go. You can't throw patients in, Dion. You mean and we'll, we'll load the patient and go to hospital? That's exactly what I mean, Jim. Yes. yes. <laughs> but it's no laughing matter. Getting stranded in a two and a half million pound aircraft with an incoming tide would be a disaster. <laughs> The crew of Helimed 63 are heading to an incident on the coast seven minutes from base just north of Hartlepool. When we land on a beach, our practice is to leave the rotors turning and burning, we call it. Because if we close the engines down for whatever reason, the aircraft then won't restart. When the tide comes in, it gets a little bit embarrassing when you um, try to pretend to be a boat. Now we're going to try and find them. Apparently they're at that grid given. Coast Guard, oh, down here, yeah, nine o'clock, Keith. I've seen. Had him in the back of the four before. Yeah. I'm jumping out. Roger. It was very difficult on scene with the spray and the noise and the wind. Apparently he'd, he'd gone to do a wheelie and he flipped over the back of the bike, gone over the back. We suspected the broken femur. My priority was just to get him on the aircraft. So, we're going to take you over to the helicopter, OK, put you in, and when you're in there, I'm going to give you a very strong painkiller, OK? Roger, Jane, I'll let them know. Sure, thank you. Don't be scared, all right? You've probably got a broken leg. That's all, all right? No meds, no problem. Ketamine's a very, very potent, strong painkiller. But uh, the side effects with some people can just be hilarious. All right? Hey? Yes, of course you can. Of course you can. Please. Oh, bless you. <laughs> Ain't not bad for an old bird, scarring. <laughs> oh, 
I'm old enough to be his mother, but he loved me and wanted to hug me and hey, thought I had fantastic eyes and all the rest of it, but it was just the drugs, clearly. <laughs> Ketamine works very quickly. Unfortunately, um, it wears off quite quickly as well. Jay, when we move him, he's yeah. going to go to Yeah, else, give him some help. Yeah, yeah. Oh, brought me back down here like I'm back. Shit. Just went out. Fuck me, that was surreal, that. Shit. That's all right, Joe. Trust us. I'm glad you love me. Not really, really, like, like. <laughs> right. I need right. you. Come here. I'll, I'll give you a look. I need you. Yeah, I, need... I know. You're my mum right now. You'll be my mum right now. I'll so be your you. mum right now, yeah. You'll be fine, sweetheart. I can't see you, mate. I know, but right, well, that's yeah, probably yeah, just as yeah, well. Yeah, please, 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 please. I'm going to stay with you, I promise. You. I am, mate, yes, me. I'm going to stay yeah, with you. Are you ready yeah. to pivot? Yes. Yes. Would you fucking pivot? No. No, we just, we're on a moving stretcher. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, we'll clear. Yeah. 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 Oh, I can't Can you bring patients down? Oh, I'm silly. I have no idea what happened. We're very fortunate on the air ambulance with having doctors. You can give really strong pain relief. I would like my son to be screaming in pain like that. Oh, the worst, worst thing in the world, listening to them screaming their heads off. You just want to help them and stop some of that pain. OK. Hi, Ian. This is Joe. He's come off a motorbike on the beach at Hartlepool. He's got an isolated leg injury and looks like shaft femur. He's had ten morphine. He's up to about 70 or 80 of ketamine in bits now. Um, he's high as a kite, um, but otherwise everything's OK. OK. Joe, I'm going to need to cut your top off, if that, is that OK? Shall I not attempt to take that boot off yet, then? I wouldn't. Yeah. Hi, Joe, I'm Catherine, one of the doctors here. How are you doing? Well, you know, this and that. That's the ketamine, yeah. He's um, obviously high as a kite with it, um, doesn't care, he's totally dissociated. I mean, they'll scream and shout and sing, as you can hear, but, you know, they don't remember anything about it, so um, it's a very good drug. Painkiller, okay? Fantastic. Right, so you pull the well, I like this guy. Joe, we're going to go now. Uh, what? We're going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for laughing at you. We're going to go because somebody else might need us. Take care. Your mum's going to look after you now. She'll sort you out. Right, Mum, when we move his leg in a second, he will shout, OK? I'm but he's moving. not going to remember anything about it. All right. I'm moving. Right, I'll be OK. <laughs> Cheers, Ian. See you later. Bye. Bye. Joe will soon be under general anaesthetic, and surgeons will begin treatment by resetting and pinning his broken bone. Oh my God, what a mess! What a mess! This is special, this is Christ. Lots of sound. Oh my goodness, that looks horrible. Is it very sore? Everybody happy I start? Yeah. You didn't hear him, Dion, in the back after he told me he loved me. He's going, 
Hug me. Hug me. I'm like, no. Sorry. Brilliant. He's fallen from that height to where he is now. OK, sure. He's got Parkinson's. Fred decided to go up and have a look at some wood in the top of the barn. I, I come out of the fast way. <laughs> <laughs> come out the fast way. Yeah. <laughs> the quick way, yeah. yeah. And then I did get wood, did I? No, you did get <laughs> wood. <laughs> I really thought that he had died. And that was really scary. Broke six ribs, that's it. I was very, very lucky. Very, very lucky. lucky. That's really bad. Jane? We'll soon have you sorted and your wife. To be honest, when I go home, a lot of the time my wife doesn't want to know what I've been up to because if it's sad, then it'll make her sad. But it's always a nice feeling when you do go home and you, you think you've made a difference. Joe's language can be a bit fruity, but on the day, it was just beyond the pale, really. Yeah, there's yes. a lot of swearing. There was, wasn't there? It's my bad leg. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was really pleased when he saw the bike, but I'm really gutted that he's planning on getting another one, to be fair. <laughs> really, really gutted. <laughs> You never know what life's got round the next corner for you. Resources like the air ambulance are so valuable and guess what, you know, you may need them. Like tomorrow, tonight, next week. Does the job ever disappoint me? No. Oh, I get total job satisfaction from what I do. I know what I signed up for, and each day is different. Um, see what challenges tomorrow brings. We have a van versus an articulated lorry, one male, heavily trapped. Right, OK, don't look at that, mate, look that way. Once well, so I give him the drug, I want him out in two minutes, all right? Quick hour can't get that oxygen supply to the brain re-established. The better um, the patient will do. Stu was just about fit. Just one of those things that happened. <laughs> OK. I don't know what happened. OK, so the leg is yours, Rod. Yeah, go for it. Oh! 